and it really got me thinking what does it actually take to sew neatly and I've looked at myself 10, 11 years ago when I first started sewing and then I looked at my present self and how am I doing things differently and I found that the differences are very subtle but they do make the difference. So I would love to share these with you today in hopes that it will make your sewing experience so much better and you'll be so much happier when you're done with your garment. Now, you probably have spotted some of these here and there in my sewing and drafting videos because of course I use them. I might not announce them in the video, but you've probably seen them time and time again. But the sequence in which I discovered how all of these actually work really well together, I hope that will make total sense and will make it so much easier. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. I think most of us don't realize, I certainly didn't when I first started sewing, that the major success in sewing actually comes from a lot of prep work before you get to the sewing part. So for example, when we're talking about a good successful fit of the garment, the prep work is really what does the heavy lifting, right? The pattern drafting, then creating a muslin or a test garment, then trying it on, making the adjustments, and then transferring those adjustments to the pattern, and then getting that pattern ready for the final garment. Now, of course, we're talking about neat sewing today and for me that starts with neat cutting of the actual pattern. Now although this is a very simple step to a success, I often see people disregard it for two reasons. Number one, it is too good to be true and too simple to be true, right? Our thought process is how can a really straight edge of whatever I'm cutting really influence the neatness of my final project? And number two, a lot of people say, well, I can tidy up my seams and the hems right after I'm done or before I'm done or whenever really I feel like it throughout the process, which is very true. But those jagged edges of the seams and those jagged edges of the hemlines really stand in the way of creating a beautiful, neat garment. And you will see how that influences all of the other steps that we're gonna be talking about today. Now, when I looked back at myself 10, 11 years ago when I first started sewing, I realized two things. Number one, I was using itty bitty tiny little scissors, which isn't really a problem in itself. You can cut fabric with these, it's not a problem, you can you can make it work. But another really big thing is that those were really dull scissors. Though these are not the actual scissors that I was using 10, 11 years ago, but you understand what I'm saying. Cutting with dull scissors definitely is a challenge because instead of making one long cut, you end up making three or four or however many short ones, which definitely disturb the fabric, makes it difficult for you, and makes for those jagged edges, especially when you're just starting to sew and you haven't really had enough practice in cutting the fabric. And another thing what dull scissors really do, and I absolutely horribly hate it when it happens, is they like to chew up your fabric. Fabric. So instead of cutting the fabric, they actually chew it up and they yank it down, meaning that all of the fabric that you have laid out that you're cutting also gets disturbed, whether you have pinned the pattern to the fabric, whether you have stabilized it with fabric weight, whichever way it goes, it still disturbs the fabric and then you have to go and readjust and realign everything and then start again. So over the years I've realized that nice sharp scissors, doesn't matter what size, just make it happen with what you you have currently on hand, but nice sharp scissors and nice even edges of your pattern as you're cutting the fabric definitely make it for a more neater outcome when you're done with your sewing. All right, now that we have cut our fabric all nice and neat with even edges, now comes the assembly of the actual garment. So we take two pieces of fabric, we put them right sides or wrong sides together depending on the type of the finish that you're going to be using and we're gonna be sewing them together. Now, a lot of times I get asked how to make a really nice, straight and even seam. Now that comes with a couple of pain points. Number one, what is your seam allowance? Number two, how evenly is your fabric cut, the edge of the fabric, which we just discussed. And number three, your ability to actually make a straight seam, which would be an equal distance from the edge of the fabric all the way through. So I have a little tip for you here, which might challenge how you see seam allowances, but I promise you it does help. For a nice and even seam that is straight from top to bottom of your project, no matter how long you've been sewing, just go ahead and align the raw edge of your fabric with the edge of your presser foot and use that as a guide instead of using markings on the plate underneath your presser foot. Now that comes with a warning. Usually the width 
from the needle to the edge of your presser foot on the regular home sewing machine is either 3 8 of an inch, sometimes quarter of an inch. Now majority of the time store bought patterns come with 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. So in order to use this trick, because it really does lead to a nice and crisp even seam and also faster assembly as well because then you don't have to trim the edges of your seam allowance in order to make them smaller because you already made them just the width that you need. Now you will need to adjust your seam allowances if you're using ready-made patterns that you buy at the stores or at least you will need to double check what is the actual width of the seam allowances but I've been doing that for a while. I've actually made a full video about seam allowances and why I don't use 5 8 of an inch seam allowances. Now if you're making the pattern for the first time and you haven't made the test garment, 5 8 of an inch seam allowance or half an inch seam allowance is definitely going to give you that room in order to make adjustments if necessary. However, I know that for my drafted patterns that I do, I always use either quarter of an inch or 3 8 of an inch because I'm sure of the fit or I have confirmed the fit beforehand. And that definitely makes it so much easier and so much faster to achieve that super nice and crisp result. Now in cases when I do need to use a wider seam allowance instead of following the guide underneath the presser foot which sometimes might be a little bit difficult to see I actually use a sticky note now you can use whatever object you want but the key idea is that you take something and then you place it at the needed distance from the needle to where you're placing that object so that will help you regulate where is that seam allowance a little bit brighter and a little bit more precise than just looking at the markings on the plate and underneath your sewing machine. Now I don't know about you, but when I first started sewing, I was constantly paranoid at my seams not being straight, especially when I did some top stitching or I was attaching bias tape or any other visible seams. And what I remember I was doing was, let's pretend that this is fabric. I would place my fabric underneath, I would lower my presser foot, I would start sewing. Then at some point I start getting really anxious about the fact that maybe my seam isn't straight. I lift the presser foot and I start looking at the seam in the back making sure that this was even and confirming that I can sew further or maybe I should just stop and take out the seam altogether and start from scratch. Now what I was actually doing is I was lifting my presser foot and then I was checking the fabric and in the process I was wiggling the fabric around. Then when I went to lower the presser foot and start sewing again, the seam was already in a different position which was actually exactly the thing that made my seams uneven. Since then, if I do need to take a look what's happening in the back, or let's say I need to pivot, always, 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 before lifting the presser foot to check what is going on with your project, lower the needle into your project and then lift the presser foot and then take a look, then lower the presser foot again. Before that, you can also readjust the fabric if you did move it a little bit and then continue sewing. That will ensure that your seam will continue exactly the same way as it was before you stopped your project to double check. And I use exactly the same technique when I'm sewing tricky curves or sharp corners or squares. Now pressing is definitely one of the key moments when it comes to a neatly assembled garment and a beautiful looking piece as a result. Don't ignore this step, it helps tremendously. Some fabric can be really, really tricky to handle and pressing helps with creating a beautiful, crisp and even hems. It makes all the difference when you're pressing necklines. It makes all the difference when you're doing understitching or creating a lining. So definitely don't disregard this step. Here's an extra tip. When you press really well in some cases, it can eliminate pinning. So that might save a little bit of time for you and a little bit of headache as well because I know that I prefer when I can just complete the seam all in one go and I don't have to stop in order to take out the pins. So here's an extra tip if you'd like to use it. I almost forgot, I also ironed the fabric before I cut my fabric and before I pinned the pattern to the fabric because that definitely helps in order to make sure that everything lays really nice and smooth without puckers, without any other surprises that I don't need. So that is also one of the tips to iron the fabric before you cut it, if you can iron your fabric. Of course, that should help you in order to make sure that everything is super neat. Now I get asked a lot how to get a really nice seam where you have an intersection of seams. Let's say at the crotch area where you have one seam coming this way, one seam coming this way, and then you have to sew it vertically in order to match everything very nice and neat. Now there's a secret to it and it's actually much easier than you think. 
and it has everything to do about distributing the bulk when it comes to sewing the intersections of the seams. Now it is much easier to do if you have pressed your seam allowances open for those projects where you have to press the seam allowances open, then it's a no-brainer. You open up your seam allowances on both sides, match up the seams, and then you sew it up. The bulk is evenly distributed. But what to do in those cases where you have sewn the seam allowances together? So let me demonstrate that for you on a real life example. Now this is a sweatshirt that I'm working on for my little one. It's a Redland style sweatshirt, therefore this is the side seam. This is the area where we need to take a look at. Now on the other side I have already completed the same seam, so let's take a look at it. As you can see, the seam allowances of the underarm section are facing in two different directions and that's exactly what we want to do right over here. We want to place our pieces right side together, match the seams, but we want to place the seam allowances in two different directions and then pin. Once that is done, you can pin the rest of the seam or whatever else that you're working on. And once that is done, let's go ahead and sew it. When you do sew, you want to make sure that you double check one more time that the seam definitely aligns and of course complete the seam. So now that that is done, let's go ahead and take a look how does it actually look from the right side of the project. So this is the wrong side and now let's take a look at the right side. Look at that, a really nice seam that matches in all four directions. Awesome. One of the things that is highly disregarded but makes all the difference for neat sewing is hand basting. Now I know it seems like an extra step and what if I don't baste but it comes out perfect anyway? Yes, there are all of these possibilities and believe me, I was in that spot when I first started sewing as well. But over the years I've learned that I'd rather take that extra time and baste it together and make sure that I'm achieving the perfect result that I'm aiming for from the get-go. Then do it and then unpick it, do it again again, unpick it, do it again, and then give up on the project altogether. Now I don't always get to emphasize the use of hand basting in my videos, however when I do detailed how-to videos, for example like we did for the t-shirt neckband, then I definitely emphasize the fact that hand basting and basting in those necklines will help you out as well, especially when it comes to stripes like I'm wearing over here to make sure that everything definitely lines up and looks really nice and neat just like you have intended. Now I usually don't do that on regular seams unless I need to pattern match. That's where hand basting definitely is a game changer as well. You might find it useful to do some hand basting when it comes to bias tape or sewing a neckline or maybe basting in a sleeve as well. So definitely take a look at that and don't skip this step. Now this one seems like a very self-explanatory thing but I have people who have asked me this question before and it goes like this. Why should I finish the insides of my garment if nobody is going to see them? And uh, that is a very good question. Well the answer is that if you want the longevity of your project, of your garment, and you don't want to end up with a gunk of threads after the first wash, then you definitely want to make sure that you finish the insides of your garment, the seams, the raw edges, and you also want to make sure that you tuck in all of the loose threads. You either finish them, either tie them in the knots and snip, or do whatever else you're doing, but you want to make sure that everything is tucked in and everything is nice and neat because the insides matter not only because it contributes to the longevity of your project, but also because it makes you feel so much better when the insides of your garment are done nice and neat. It's kind of like wearing nice underwear or underwear that doesn't have any rips or holes in it, right? It kind of makes you feel a little bit better about yourself. So the same goes to the insides of your garment, at least in my opinion. So definitely tuck in all of the loose threads, all of the serger ends, make sure that all of the edges are finished with whatever technique that you're using and that the inside is just as good as the outside. Another thing that makes all the difference with neat sewing is actually hand sewing. And I think a lot of times we don't think of it because when we get a piece of equipment that can do all of these amazing things for us, like for example the sewing machine, we forget that our hands can also do all of these amazing things and sometimes the things that the machine cannot do. So some of the really beautiful blind hems can be only completed by hand. 
So definitely don't disregard the fact that your hands are capable of so many amazing things when it comes to sewing and definitely don't skip it when you want to create a beautiful and neat finish on this or that project. So if you feel in the back of your mind that mm, maybe I should do this blind hem by hand or maybe I should understitch something by hand or do this or that by hand, do it, try it. It will only take you a little bit longer than by a sewing machine and if you don't like it, you can always let it out and do that by the sewing machine because I think you might be surprised how good it actually looks. Well, hem of the garment is where a lot of us, from what I read in the comments, get really discouraged and are just ready to give up or don't have the motivation to do it because hems can be a little bit tricky to get that really nice and crisp, even hem. That might take a little bit of time, but guess what? It goes back to the point number one where I did emphasize that even cutting of the actual pattern piece from the fabric makes all the difference. And that also goes to creating a nice and even hem. If you cut it even and straight to begin with and everything else was sewn with the correct seam allowance, with the correct width, with the correct stitch, then you finished all your seams, then finishing the hem should be no problem at all. I can tell you for sure that I haven't had any anxiety or any lack of motivation on finishing the hems on the projects in years. So it definitely does work and it definitely does make all the difference. And as I mentioned, all of these pieces work really well together. And as you can see, we're at the last point of this video and we circled back to the first point, which was to cut everything nice and even. And just your luck, I actually have a full video of different types of hems that I use personally in my sewing drafting tutorials and in the creation of my garments. So definitely go ahead and click right over here, take a look at that video. I think you will find some useful information and I'll see you very soon in another one. Take care, sew beautiful things. See you soon. Bye.